Never have I experienced such a claustrophobic, horrific, and helpless feeling of immersion than when I first booted up Capsule in the darkness of my bedroom on a cold December night. Created by Adam Saltzman and Robin Arnott, and produced by Finji, Capsule creates an atmosphere using the simplest graphics, a short list of controls, and a bleak universe. Capsule is about traversing through the unforgiving depths of space in a small, weaponless escape pod, trying to piece together the disastrous events that led to you being stranded in the middle of the void, desperately trying to keep your ship powered and yourself breathing. Adam Saltzman, creator of the arcade runner Cannibal, began working on a prototype for this game in 2011 after playing the classic Lunar Lander cabinet at a convention in San Francisco in 2010. He was imagining a game that marriage Lunar Lander's tight analog controls and the cold atmosphere of a computer console. The concept was finally realized when Saltzman recruited sound engineer Robin Arnott, the developer of Sound Self, which is... a game... I think? The world of Capsule is seen through a faded, archaic radar console, which other than the sounds made by your pod colliding into various pieces of space debris, is the only way to understand and learn about the space around you. The main objective is to receive messages that slowly unfold the tragic events that occurred in the game world, but the bulk of the game is spent purely surviving and finding air pockets, fuel cells, and ion vents that will boost your pod's meager supply of life support the smallest amount, which is the difference between life and death later in the game. The best aspect of this game, and the strongest leg it has to stand on, is definitely the atmosphere it creates, but only when the player allows it to exist. What I mean by this is that to understand what Saltzman was aiming to create with this game, the player must allow themselves to be in the dark, cramped, and likely cold pod, helpless in the middle of unforgiving space. This is not a game to play on your train or at home, but should be played as one would read a horror novel. When your house is empty, your lights are off, and the only thing illuminating your room is the faint glow of your radar screen guiding you to the next fueling station. While the novelty of the game's UI is enough to warrant this small purchase, the thrill of finding the next ion vent, or the feeling of dread and panic as you watch your lifeless pod stand in the center of nothingness while the screen slowly loses color as your last reserves of oxygen dwindles down to empty, is enough to let the game take you for a ride you will not be forgetting anytime soon. The clever use of sound design is very apparent in this game, and is another outstanding feature of Capsule. Arnott's use of echoes, three-dimensional sound, and the faint droning noises in the background add to the ever-growing atmosphere this game prides itself on. While it is fun to shoot around in space in your little tin can, scanning everything in sight, and running from space pirates, my enthusiasm for playing falls short around the 30-minute mark. While the mood and tone it presents is some of the best game design I've seen from an indie game in a long time, it isn't always enough to keep my interest up. After dying for the third time trying to do the same thing I had just done ten times before that, the atmosphere fades and I begin to feel the repetition grating on me. Capsule's meager price point of $4.99 at the time of recording, and its novelty alone, should be a deciding factor on whether or not you pick up this game. Although it may not have the gameplay behind it for a lengthy play session, I would still tag this as one of Steam's hidden gems and recommend throwing it in your cart next time you're browsing for something new.